I had a young person ask me the other day, what do you know about GMOs, knowing I was in the field of nutrition? Instead of expounding on it and doing the whole litany of, you know, information, I said, God made oranges, GMO, it's that simple. But today on Know the Cause, we're gonna expound on it, on genetically modified organisms, right? Is it okay, is it not? Uh, we we'll, won't reach a conclusion, but at least I'll teach you a little bit about them. Then Dr. John Trowbridge, a physician from Houston, is gonna be on, talking about urinary tract infections. And what he's saying is, correct the problem. Don't just throw drugs at it, right? And then Lindsay is in the kitchen and she's making coconut shrimp. Finally, Annie Brandt, who's written a book on cancer. All that and more on today's Know the Cause. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after its kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after its kind. Wow, that's Genesis. That's the Bible, Genesis 11 and 12. Folks, I get this question often, so help me with this. You know, if the Bible, the Old Testament, is referring to seed of like kind, seed of like kind, seed of like kind, that lemon is a lemon, don't make it an apple. Glenda asks, what about GMO foods? Uh, and boy, I, I, look, I know as an alternative medicine guy, I'm supposed to shake my finger at this. And then last January, I found myself at a party with a group of friends, fourth of, I'm sorry, last July, fourth of July, I'm sitting with a group of people and I'm eating a watermelon, a slice of watermelon, and I'm saying, gosh, I'm glad there aren't seeds in that. Hmm, boy, I didn't follow that very well, did I? With seed of like kind, there were no seeds in it. I ate a genetically modified watermelon. And then there's the word, genetically modified organism. After teaching, and I'm now teaching doctors, you know, as best I can about cancer, three lectures this year in which we gave continuing medical education to the doctors just to hear little humble Doug Kaufman. And I, I spoke about genetically modified organisms. A cancer tumor is an organism. It has a life in and to itself, quite possibly as I teach, a hybrid. But I think human DNA and fungal DNA converge and create this new hybrid. But it's a genetically modified organism. We call cancer genetic mutations. So what this is, is a GMO. I want you to know that I have different thoughts on this. So I read the same websites you guys do and they say GMO foods is gonna kill us. Folks, I probably, I go out and have a salad at lunch with John or someone here at the office and I know the restaurant where I go because it's not an expensive restaurant. They don't buy tomatoes that aren't GMO. Those are GMO tomatoes. And I'm waiting for my ear to fall off or a third eye to form in my head. I feel good for an old guy. Got up this morning and did, you know, my, my exercise, my jogging and so forth. I feel great for an old guy. So it's not fair to say everybody eating these are falling apart. But I will tell you this. Of a 16 nation, the 16 wealthiest nations in the world, guess where our health in America is, number what? Number four? Would you be shocked to learn we're at number 16? Is it fungus? Is it eating all these genetically modified organisms? You know, DNA was just founded in, what, 1935, and by 1994, it ended up in our food supply. If you're eating soy or corn or tomatoes or, you know, some foods, let's put it this way. If you're eating out of a can or a box, you're eating GMOs. So, Glenda, I, I hope that helps you to understand. Now, I don't want to eat genetically modified organisms. Uh, not routinely, maybe every once in a while, but I don't support that. I don't support genetically modified organisms. The whole premise was they were here to feed a nation. The nation is still hungry. The world is still hungry.
And folks, now they're blaming global warming. Well, we couldn't get the seeds grown and yada, yada, and that's why we can't feed everybody in Africa and, and around the world. Here's the take home message. If I grow my own fruit, grow my own vegetables, which I have the right to, right? If you have some land, if you have a backyard, you can do this. If I eat organic, they say only four to five percent of all organic food is GMO food. If I look on labels, I shop at health food stores and I always see non-GMO on the label, then that's okay. My huge, my biggest problem with genetically modified organisms is our government says, along with the industry that's bringing us these, what some people call Franken foods, um, they don't have to label them. If you're proud of your product, label it and let the people choose. If you're afraid of your product or you don't want the people to know, shh, don't label it. Every other country labels genetically modified. This can of soup has genetically modified beans in it, okay? I wanna know that. So my problem with GMOs is, show us what foods are GMO and let me choose. I can choose to drive a Ford or a Chevy. I can choose to wear these kinds of clothes or shorts to work every day. This is still America, I'm still free. Label GMO and let me decide. I hope that helps, Glenda. I wonder how many of those watching right now have UTIs. You know what that stands for? Urinary tract infections. You know where I'm going, guys. I, I've often wondered if this isn't something we pass back and forth in a loving relationship with our spouse. Joining me right now is a man who was a urologist and is now a general practitioner. Right. You do general medicine. I, I have done general medicine for virtually all well, of my career. So, Dr. Trowbridge, why didn't you stay in urology? Oh, I'm too opinionated, Doug. You okay, know that. Okay. I'd never get referrals. Right. You know, when I was in my training, I, I did some very elegant training, National Institutes of Health. I went to Western Reserve at Premier Medical School. Uh, I really trained up to be a good surgeon and then realized I will correct the medical management of a patient before I send them back. Not a good way to get a referral. <laughs> So I went to general when you practice. Were, when you were in urology, yes. you must have seen a few urinary tract a infections. Few, quite a okay. few. Take me down the road of you at 33 years old and you now at what, you've got to be at least 45. So <laughs> at what's... 55. 55. <laughs> Take me, what would you have done? Oh. An antibiotic, an antibiotic? Because you found that, that's what you in their urine, an you found bacteria? Absolutely. Okay. Well, even if you don't find bacteria, you know, well, your symptoms are close enough to what you've had before, let's write it for you. And the ones I like especially are, well, you know, Doc, I always get uh, urinary tract infection. Well, keep this antibiotic on hand. Just take it whenever you get it. Prophylactically. Exactly. Yeah. Or I get it after we have sex. Well, then go ahead and take it then. Okay, let's, can we talk about that? Sure. Can we pass a fungal organism? Dermatophytes live on the skin. Mm -hmm. Men's reproductive organs, you know, are on the outside. Mm -hmm. We have skin. And these dermatophytes can live on that. What do they want? They want to be in a nice, warm environment, right? <laughs> if you think about this, folks, we're probably passing this back and forth. When, when women came to me at Medical City to see the doctors, I'd always say, look, suspect, does your husband drink beer? Oh, yeah, my husband loves beer. Use a barrier. Use a barrier and see if these UTIs don't happen after you enjoy intimacy, right? Was I wrong or was I way ahead of myself? Uh, they got better, right? Yeah, they yeah, did. Okay, they weren't affected. That. Think yeah. about that. The, the problem with a lot of modern medicine understandings is we have kind of an A to B approach. You got this, we do that. And they don't look for something else associated with how you got this, okay? Yeah. And know so they the don't cause. go before, exactly, they don't know the cause, they don't go back one more step. Uh, barrier protection is useful, uh, appropriate lubrication is useful, good hormones for the woman especially is useful, adequate control. You know, we find that when women get a urinary uh, tract infection, it's often associated with a vaginitis. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just because of the embryology as to how it all grew together, okay? But it turns out when they get vaginal yeast infections and they get treated, usually inadequately, okay? Because yep. yep. unfortunately doctors don't understand all the dynamics of that. Right. A few weeks or months later, they get another vaginal yeast infection. It's the same exact one because it buried itself inside, waited until everything was, coast was clear, came back out, same thing. Try to get physicians to understand that in the middle of a busy practice, that you actually have something else going on, not just another infection, 
it's something where you've got to get to know the clause and treat that that much further back. I'll never forget Dr. Dave Holland, when we were writing our books, early books back in the 1990s, early 2000s, he brought me an article. It was published in a major medical journal, and it said virtually 100% of women who have chronic vaginal yeast infections have gut yeast infections. This won't go until this goes. Hence the importance of using something like enzymes or nystatin or something in the gut of Absolutely. these people, even with urinary tract. The hidden reservoir for yeast, there's two key ones. One is the gut, the other is the sinuses, okay? And if you don't eradicate it, you're just going to repopulate yourself. You're not going to fix a fungal infection anywhere in your body to you address the gut because all the toxins are coming out. That's the difference between a yeast infection which is a localized thing. People get, you know, jock itch and that yep. bleeds foot yep. and so on. But that's just an infection. The syndrome is where you're quietly cooking all these yeast on the inside. They're percolating the poisons out into you and damaging your systems on the inside. That's got to be fixed or your immune system will never work right. You wrote the yeast syndrome 30 years 30 ago. 30 years ago. There's a reason it's still selling <laughs> yes, and because. become a bestseller because it's contemporary. Yes. Your peers don't know. Correct. Anything that we just talked about in this five minutes, they really don't know. And then you're always available to see folks. 1-800-END-PAIN. No, fix pain. Fix pain. Fix pain. Who has end pain? I have no idea. Whoever has it has got to be a wealthy person. <laughs> fix pain. Um, when inflammation goes, I don't hurt so much. That's what you do at your clinic near Houston, Absolutely. Right? Inflammation is the root cause of all the problems. But you said it 10 years before Time Magazine said uh, Before the journal, the AMA said it. More important than More Time important, Magazine. Yes. Thank you so much for coming in and being with us today. Do you have UTIs? Think systemic. It's growing locally, but think systemic. Thank you, Dr. Tor. Thank you, Dr. Tor. from Guiltless Superfoods here at Know the Cause. Today we're gonna to do a really delicious coconut shrimp recipe using our seven seed, yeast-free, phase one approved flour. We have started heating up our oil. This is coconut oil, and I wanted to show you what coconut oil looks like at room temp. It's still kind of hard, and this comes in a jar, and we took one to two cups in our pan, and this is warming up, getting nice and hot at about 350 degrees because this is what we're gonna fry our shrimp in. I've got two whole eggs here. I'm gonna throw in some garlic powder, sea salt, and black pepper and beat that all together. Those seasonings with the egg are gonna stick to the shrimp nicely and give it a nice depth of flavor and help bring out the coconut too. Okay. You can use any shallow dish for your egg and your flour. Okay, next I have equal parts unsweetened coconut, um, shredded coconut, and our guiltless seven seed flour. I'm just gonna combine these. Coconut shrimp is one of my favorite things to get when I'm somewhere near the ocean or somewhere kind of fun and tropical. It's kind of a treat, and how neat now that we can make it at home with our seven seed flour. This is a phase one approved recipe. All right, I have some medium shrimp here. Large jumbo shrimp would be great too. I'm gonna take about six, go ahead and put them in my egg wash, get them completely wet all the way around. Nice and coated so that our coconut and seed flour batter or breading will stick to them. Just kind of toss them on there, roll them around, get them completely covered. Okay, all six are completely covered. Now we're gonna toss them into the oil. Be careful if you're doing this with your hands because your oil's hot.
It's so nice to be able to fry these in coconut oil with the coconut shreds as well. Really accentuates the coconut flavor. We're gonna cook them for just about a minute or two on each side. Shrimp cooks very fast, and these aren't too big of shrimp, so they're gonna cook rather quickly. You can hear that sizzle. Okay, we cook these for about three to four minutes on each side. If you're not used to frying anything, it was really simple. I don't fry much, but this was easy and I look forward to doing it again. Especially with coconut oil. I love the benefits of coconut oil. And of course, it's antifungal. All right. We're gonna let those kind of drain on the paper towels. That's the word I was looking for. And then you can make a kind of at-home marmalade with just some raw local honey and a fresh squeeze of lemon. That citrus and sweet is one of my favorite flavor combinations. Just a little mix there. And a dip. You guys, this would be great for entertaining an appetizer or even a dinner. These are so fun and easy to do. Wow. It's cooked all the way through. It's crunchy, but it's still moist. It has so much flavor. I love them. This recipe will be on knowthecause.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. even imagine for a second how many books that are sent to me. Look, I've been blessed to be a television talk show host on health, and everybody wants to put their book in my hands. Some of them I read, some of them, you know, the number I get, I, I don't. I had this book, it's called The Healing Platform, for probably a year before I read it. And the reason I read it was I met its author, Annie Brandt, at a meeting in Orlando, Florida, here a couple of months. She was speaking, I was speaking, we're talking on cancer, right? Um, and Annie was there and she signed this copy for me and then she said, well, you got nothing to do tonight, Doug, in your room, just go back and read it. <laughs> Unreal. Three out. well, as you can see, I read it. Three hours, I couldn't put this book down and here's why. Annie, thank you Hi. for coming in and being with us. Thank you for having me. Because it's written by someone who heard those words, you have cancer because it's written by someone bold enough to put God within the content of the book. Uh, because it was written by someone who had breast cancer and yet she said, mm, think about mammograms. Uh, because she said cancer had a personality. And then it's a workbook. She heard from people as she was growing up, you're not smart, you're stupid. That hurts, it hurts anyone. And she learned that to denounce that, you must write it down and get rid of it. Wow. I'm reading this book, Annie. It's stuff I had never heard before. Thank God I haven't heard the three words you had. 15, 16 years ago, you have cancer. This cancer book made total sense to me and I want you to put it on your shelf. You could do it very inexpensively. If you're anything like me, you won't be able to put it down. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much again for having me. The book me. meant a lot to me after I read it. My wife said, go back and give her a hug and say, wow, that's a tremendous book. I did in Orlando. Uh, literally couldn't get enough of it. Quickly, 2001, you hear you have breast cancer. You hear you have 90 days to live because it's metastasized through your body. And yet there was something about you, unlike a lot of women who said, okay, for me, that's go get them. For most women, get your affairs in order in 90 days. Um, who should read this book? Well, with the new statistics of one every two men and one out of every three women getting cancer diagnosis in their lifetime, I think everybody needs to read it. Because even if you don't have it now, or especially if you don't have it now, you stand a pretty good chance of getting a diagnosis. Mm. And I like some of the tips in the book, diet, for example. I like some of the tips in the book on why do we wait till we hear those three words? What if we started right now? Can you define for me what a cancer personality is. Yeah, it was, it was interesting to me. I found that 
in 2001, 2, I had no idea. But it evidently that uh, people with cancer all have common personality traits. So they're all go-getters. They put everybody else first. They are self-sacrificers. You know, they're, they're obviously last. They're not worth it. They have yeah. feelings, thinking, thinking is what I call it. They have feelings of unworthiness. And, and you were actually told that. Mm -hmm. Does it help when people write down, ouch, you know, that's going to kind of hurt. When they write down, gosh, my dad said this, and my coworker said this, and you know, my brother used to tell me this. Mm -hmm. I think dumping that off instead of carrying that around. That's why it's a trade book. You have all the spaces. Write it down, throw it away, get rid of it. That really helps. It helped a lot. It's you know, these are bruises, these diseases are bruises that in our lives that we keep covering up and and working over and glossing over, but we feel those, we live those thoughts and those belief systems, and that that adds to cancer. It's toxic. Annie, you had breast cancer, but prior to that, you had other health problems going on. Did those culminate into cancer, do you believe? My personal belief is that chronic disease can cause cancer because it's really just a constant breakdown of the immune system. And then finally, I wish we had 20 minutes. By the way, Annie and I did a 20-minute podcast. It's on my website, knowthecause.com. Go check it out and you'll hear the whole story. You had breast cancer and yet you say women be careful of mammography. Why? Mammography is radiation, pure and simple, and they've proven that it can stimulate cancer. The book is called The Healing Platform, Unreal. You will love it from chapter one on. It's forwarded by a guy named Don, uh, uh, Dr. Sean Devlin. Sean Devlin. Don Shevlin, I always right. say. Dr. Sean <laughs> Devlin. He's been called Amazing guy. Amazing guy. <laughs> I couldn't get enough of this doctor. But at any rate, it's a wonderful, wonderful book. You can get it on Amazon. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, bestanswerforcancer.org, everything spelled out. Best Answer for Cancer. Annie, it's really a, a, a privilege to be here. Thank you Real so much. Real pleasure to see you too. Thank, Thank you. you. And friends, that's about it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Do you like the show? Do you have a friend who needs to see the show? Maybe it was Annie's book, The Healing Platform. Maybe it was Dr. Trowbridge talking about urinary tract infections. Uh, by the way, unsweetened cranberry juice goes a long way with people that have urinary tract infections. Maybe it was the couple, Daniel and Lindsay together. Maybe it was my opening on GMO. Do you know someone who needs this information? Just tell them to go to knowthecause.com and they can see the whole show all over again. And did you know we do two shows every day? You get to watch one, but other states and other cities get to watch the other one. Now you can watch both on our website at midnight if you'd like. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for telling your friends about Know the Cause because together we can grow this knowledge. See you next time.